This is the Helicopter Flying Handbook, chapter 11, page 22 of 24, multi-engine emergency operations. Single engine failure. When one engine has failed, the helicopter can often maintain altitude and airspeed until a suitable landing site can be selected. Whether or not this is possible becomes a function of such combined variables as aircraft weight, density, altitude, height above ground, airspeed, phase of flight, single engine capability, and environmental response time and control technique may be additional factors. Caution must be exercised to correctly identify the malfunctioning engine since there is no telltale yawing as occurs in most multi-engine airplanes. Shutting down the wrong engine could be disastrous. Even when flying multi-engine powered helicopters, rotor RPM must be maintained at all costs because fuel contamination has been documented as the cause for both engines failing in flight. Dual engine failure. So on page 23 of 24, the flight characteristics and the required crew member control responses after a dual engine failure are similar to those during a normal power on descent. Full control of the helicopter can be maintained during auto rotational descent. In auto rotation and airspeed increase above 70 80 knots indicated airspeed. The rate of descent and glide distance increases significantly as airspeed decreases below approximately 60 knots indicated airspeed, K-I-A-S. The rate of descent increases and glide distance decreases. Lost procedures. Pilots become lost while flying for a variety of reasons such as disorientation, flying over unfamiliar territory, or visibility that is low enough to render Un to render familiar terrain unfamiliar. When a pilot becomes lost, the first order of business is to fly the aircraft. The second to implement lost procedures. Keep in mind that the pilot workload will be high and increased concentration is necessary. If lost, always remember to look for the practically invisible hazards such as, why, such as wires by searching for their support structures such as poles or towers, which are almost n always near roads. If lost, follow common sense procedures. Try to locate any large landmarks such as lakes, rivers, towers, railroad tracks, or interstate highways. If a landmark is recognized, use it to find the helicopter's location on the sectional chart. If flying near a town or city, a pilot might be able to read the name of the town on a water tower or even land to ask for directions. If no town or city is nearby, the first thing a pilot should do is climb. An increase in altitude increases radio and navigation reception ranges as well as radar coverage. Navigation aids, dead reckoning, and pilotage are skills that can be used as well. Do not forget air traffic control. Controllers assist pilots in many ways, including finding a lost helicopter. Once communication with ATC has been established, follow their instructions. These common sense procedures can easily be remembered by using the four C's. Climb, communicate, confess, and comply. Climb for a better view, improve communication and navigation reception, and terrain avoidance. Communicate by calling the nearest flight service station, FSS, automated flight service station, AFSS, on 122.2 MHz if the FSS or AFSS does not respond, call the nearest control tower, center, or approach control. For frequencies, check the chart in the vicinity of the last known position. If that fails, switch to emergency radio frequency 121.5 MHz and transponder code 7700. Report the lost situation to air traffic control and request help. Comply with controller instructions. Pilots should understand the services provided by ATC and the resources and options available. These services enable pilots to focus on aircraft control and help them make better decisions in, in a time of stress. When contacting the ATC, pilots should provide as much information as possible because ATC uses the information to determine what kind of assistance it can provide with available assets and capabilities. capabilities. Information requirements vary depending on the existing situation. But at a minimum, a pilot should provide the following information, aircraft identification and type, nature of the emergency, aviator's desires. To reduce the chances of getting lost in the first place, use flight following when it is available. Monitor checkpoints no more than 25 miles apart. Keep navigation aids such as VORs turned in and maintain good situational awareness. Getting lost in a potential dangerous situation for any aircraft, especially when low on fuel. 
Due to the helicopter's unique ability to land almost anywhere, pilots have more flexibility than other aircraft as to land in sight. An inherent risk associated with being lost is waiting too long to land in a safe area. Helicopter pilots should land before fuel exhaustion occurs because maneuvering with low fuel levels could cause the engine to stop due to fuel starvation as fuel sloshes or flows away from the pickup port in the tank. If lost and low on fuel, always land with fuel on board to enable a safe landing. Preferably land near a road or in an area allowing plenty of room for another helicopter to land in the same area safely. Having fuel delivered is a minor inconvenience when compared to a crash. Fuel on board after landing allows use of radios as well as heat in colder climates, emergency equipment, and survival gear. Both Canada and Alaska require pilots to carry survival gear. Always carry survival gear when flying over rugged and desolate terrain. The items suggested in figure 11-14 are both weather and terrain dependent. The pilot also needs to consider how much stored space the helicopter has and how the equipment being carried affects the overall weight and balance of the helicopter. Chapter Summary Emergency should always be anticipated. Knowledge of the helicopter, possible malfunctions and failures, and methods of recovery can help the pilot avoid accidents and be a safer pilot. Helicopter pilots should always expect the worst hazards and possible aerodynamic effects and plan for safe exit path or procedure to compensate for the hazard. So that is page uh, 24, 24. That was page 23 to 24. Here's page 24. This is uh, emergency equipment and survival gear. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll hold off there. That is uh, chapter 11 conclusion. See ya.